In this video, we will conduct a two-sample t-test, also known as an independent samples t-test, assuming the population variances of the two samples are equal, using a step-by-step -step hypothesis testing procedure, and we'll walk through each step manually. Let's consider the following example, where the amount of exercise for a sample of statistics students are given, and a claim is made that the mean exercise time for female students is less than the mean exercise time for male students and the significance level alpha is set at 0.05. Now, in the next few slides, we will follow a five-step hypothesis testing procedure. We'll begin by formulating null and alternative hypotheses. Then, we'll verify that the data meets certain statistical assumptions and once assumptions are confirmed, we'll compute the test statistic. In the third step, we will find the p-value using the t-distribution table. Then, we'll make a decision about the null hypothesis based on the p-value and in the final step, we'll interpret the results and draw conclusions. Before developing the null and alternative hypotheses, we need to define the parameter of interest and the claim made about the population. A parameter is a number that describes the whole population of interest. A claim is a statement made about the population in the study or survey using a parameter of interest. In this scenario, the parameter of interest is the difference between the two population means and the claim says that the mean exercise time for female students is less than that of male students. A null hypothesis is defined as a statement of zero or no change. This means the null hypothesis says that there is no difference in the population mean exercise time for female and male statistics students. An alternative hypothesis is defined as the statement that is true if the null hypothesis is false. This means the alternative hypothesis states that the population mean exercise time for female students is less than that of male students. This is a left-tailed test because the alternative hypothesis includes the less-than sign. Before performing the t-test, we need to test whether we can assume that the population variances of the two samples are equal. This can be done by using the thumb rule. The thumb rule states that the sample variance of one group should not be more than twice the sample variance of the other group. Now to test this assumption, calculate the sample variances of the two groups using the following formula. From the calculated sample variances, there is evidence that the sample variance of one group is not more than twice the sample variance of the other group. Hence, we can assume that the population variances of the two groups are equal. Now, to calculate the test statistic which is the t-statistic, use the following formula. A t-statistic for the difference between the two population means gives the standardized distance between the two population means. In the t-statistic formula, x-bar is the sample mean, s-square is the sample variance, n is the sample size, and sp-square is the pooled variance of the two populations. Use the following formula to calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation and put these values in the t-statistic formula. We compute the test statistic, t equals minus 1.53. Now, moving on to the third step of the hypothesis test, we need to find the p-value. A p-value is also known as the probability of making a type 1 error, that is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. In statistical term, it is the probability of getting the t-statistic at least as extreme as minus 1.53 when the null hypothesis is true. In this case, the t-statistic is minus 1.53. The t-statistic follows a t-distribution with 48 degrees of freedom and the p-value lies on the left tail of the t-distribution because the alternative hypothesis is left-tailed. In the t-distribution plot, the area under the curve, on the left side of the t-value of minus 1.53 represents the p-value. In the t-distribution table, first, select a row for the degrees of freedom value of 48. Then select the cells within which the absolute value of the t-statistic that is 1.53 lies. 
Now select the column values associated with these two cells which provides the range of the p-value. The p-value lies between 0.05 and 0.10. Now, in the fourth step, use the p-value approach to make a decision regarding the null hypothesis which says that reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than the significance level. Since the p-value is greater than the significance level of 0.05, we failed to reject the null hypothesis. Now, in the fifth and final step, we will conclude the summary of the hypothesis test. Since the null hypothesis failed to be rejected, at a 5% significant level, there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the population mean exercise time for female students is less than that of male students. This means there's insufficient evidence to conclude that female students, on average, exercise less than male students. Leave a comment and let me know what other videos you'd like to see.